Hey guys, so one of the things that we're making while we're at home is gonna be for the lunchbox cooker and I need breadcrumbs for it as a binder. So what I did, I went to the clearance bakery rack at Walmart and they had this. This is just a bag of various different kinds of bread. There's bagel in here, there's like Kaiser rolls, wheat bread. So what I'm gonna do I already preheated my oven to 400 and all I'm doing is I'm going to tear this up into chunks, the different types of bread and I want to get a little bit of each kind and I'm just going to toast it in the oven until it's nice and crispy. And then once it cools, I'm just going to put it in a Ziploc bag and I'm going to crunch it up and basically make breadcrumbs. Uh, it's as simple as that really. But having this different kind of variety of breads gives us a kind of a variety of flavors in our breadcrumbs. It's as simple as this. This bag of bread was 69 cents on the clearance rack. You can use homemade bread, you can use leftover bread, you can use regular old white sandwich bread. Toast it off in the oven till it's nice and crispy. Keep an eye on it because it will burn easily. And then just crunch it up. It's as easy as that. If you don't want to do this, if you don't have a way to do this, I have no idea what this is, but it's very dense. If you don't have a way to do this, I'm only doing this because I'm at home. You can buy seasoned breadcrumbs at Walmart, or you can just buy plain breadcrumbs. That works fine for what we're going to use it for. That's about it. That's how you make breadcrumbs. Alright guys, so my lasagna is in the oven and it's cooking. So while that's cooking, we're going to put together our meatloaf. I don't make meatloaf a lot. Sing's not a big fan of it, but I want some, so I'm making some. So it's really simple. We have the onions and garlic that we cooked up earlier. This is just, I use the 93.7 because I don't want this to cook in God grave. I don't want this to cook in a big puddle of fat because it's going in this pan in the lunchbox cooker. But it's got enough fat in it so that it still cooks. So <clears throat> I'm also gonna add for my binders to help this stick together, I have one egg. We ate 17 hard boiled eggs. We're terrible people. We were really like hard boiled eggs. <laughs> yeah. And I made breadcrumbs. I just found some reduced clearance uh, bread at Walmart and I'm just using that and I'm going to put a good size handful of breadcrumbs in here. And this is just kind of our binder. You can use crackers. Um, wow, some of these pictures are really big. Uh, you can use crackers. You can use sandwich bread that you've toasted. Pretty much anything you guys bread wise you can use for a binder in meatloaf. I'm just going to store these in the freezer out of the way. I'll use them at another time for something else. We're going to add a little bit of salt. We're going to add cumin because I love cumin and I'll put cumin in everything if I have the choice. And I want a lot of cumin because I love the flavor of it. I'm putting a little bit of Italian seasoning in it. This blend has marjoram, thyme, rosemary, savory, sage, rage, this, oregano, and basil. Basically, it's just a dried herb blend. And I like the flavor of it with ground beef. I use this a lot in spaghetti, Italian dishes, obviously. So we're just going to put that in there. Not a lot. And a tablespoon or so. And then we're going to put in lots and lots of coarse black pepper. This is super easy to make meatloaf, guys. You can also um, use a turkey beef blend. You don't want to use just 
ground turkey because ground turkey is very, very, very lean. So you don't have enough fat in it to cook and it's going to turn out really, really dry. So if you're going to use ground turkey, make sure that you blend it with either ground beef or ground pork. I know that sounds like a lot of pepper, but it's really not. So this is easy. Mix this up with your hands, throw it in there. We're going to put it in the freezer, guys, because we're not leaving for a couple of days. We're going to put it in the freezer and let it freeze solid. So when we leave, we're going to put it in our cooler. We just have a 12 volt cooler. We don't have an actual fridge. It's an ambient temperature cooler, which means that it keeps the temperature inside the cooler 40 degrees cooler than whatever the temp is inside the truck. It's not an actual uh, refrigerator. It doesn't set on a temperature. So that will thaw out. And I'm gonna say it's gonna take a day, maybe two tops, because this is only a pound of meat. So when it thaws, we're gonna cook it. That way it's not sitting in there. Uh, we keep the truck pretty cool. And with the um, summer temperatures kind of fading away, we're having a lot better luck with our cooler. So this should keep it below 40 degrees, which is your temperature threshold. If you're getting real hot in your truck, guys, be very, very careful if you have one of these coolers. Because if stuff gets up over 40 degrees, stuff like mayonnaise, uh, raw meat, eggs, you need to throw it out. Because you could potentially be inviting salmonella, all these uh, food, botulism, food diseases that you don't want, especially being on the truck. It's be bad. So I'm going to mix this up. Yuck. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to mix this up. I'm going to get it all smushed down in my pan. I'll put foil on it, put it in the freezer. And then when we cook it, we'll, uh, we'll show you guys what it looks like.